Welcome to section two. In this section, we'll use a common machine learning problem, image recognition. Digit handwriting set that we'll be using are grayscale images of handwritten written digits from zero to nine. Each pixel is represented as a feature and the label or class is the digit that has been written. We'll talk about the support vector machine algorithms available. We'll project our data down onto two dimensions and plot. We'll build a model and finally, we'll look at a little fancier way to visualize our confusion matrix. In this video, we're going to talk a bit about support vector machines and go ahead and explore our data. Oftentimes, when your data looks like this, a linear plane for separation is not the easiest thing to do. Having a circle or other non-standard form in multi-dimensional space is a powerful tool for capturing complex shapes. Support vector machines do that with the help of swappable kernels. Essentially, as opposed to linear models where everything is a hyperplane in multidimensional space, which effectively means a straight line, but in more dimensions than three. An SVM is able to set spots out in space that represent a class and have a tolerance around them. There are other kernels that support even more complex shapes than the radial shape that I'm describing. For more information, I'd recommend Wikipedia's article on SVMs, but I think as we begin to use them, you'll see what they're useful for. The code in the download file provides the functions to load up the dataset and transform it into a useful format. It's a bit outside of the scope of machine learning here, so I'll leave it to the user to explore the file if they care to know how the data is transitioned into the format we use it in. We simply load that file up, You'll see the files download or load up if you've already downloaded them. In other words, they're cached locally on the file system. We'll load up caret package nmf, which is a matrix decomposition technique, tsne, which we use for projecting data, and ggplot2. So first, let's take a look at what's available in the mtrain variable, which has been created by our download file, n, x, and y. N is the number of examples, which is 60,000. If we look at dimensions, we see we have 784 features, or 784 pixels. If we take a look at a single row, you see that it's a sparse matrix with many zeros in each row, and then some numbers indicating the pixels where there are marks. The show digit function is included in the download functions, and you can see a representation of the image. We're going to go ahead and sample out a thousand of our records and create an X and a Y set. Since TSNE projects data into two dimensions, it makes for nice cluster graphs. But in order to do TSNE, you want to reduce features first, as it's not very efficient on high dimensional data set. And currently, our data has 784 dimensions. What I've done in this, these couple of lines is to create a matrix called noise with random numbers. You see these are random numbers that are very small between 0 and 0 0.1. The idea is that PCA does not work well, or in some cases will even error out when an entire column or feature is 0. By adding this noise, we have not significantly changed the data set, but we've made PCA able to work more efficiently. Now we run PCA, and we can take a look at our transformed data. Now we only have 10 features in our data. This allows us to run TSNE much more efficiently. Now that that's completed, we can take the TSNE results and the label the digit and put them into a data frame. Allows us to plot the data and to see how well the numbers cluster together. As we've projected the data down, we've obviously lost information. So clustering is not perfect fit, or this graph is not a perfect indication as to how well our model will separate those. But it's fairly optimistic to see the various colors clustering pretty well and separately from each other. At this point, I think we can go ahead and move on to creating our model 
and seeing how well it performs.